you are watching Redicon. Here is an example of what a normal PCL looks like, posterior cruciate ligament, which is a homogeneously low signal and smooth contour structure. It attaches to the medial femoral condyle, and we can see ligament of Riesberg just superior to the PCL demonstrated by the small arrow here. The star indicates the origin of the ACL at the lateral femoral condyle. A couple of examples of PCL injuries. Uh, the, you can see the PCL here is thickened. There are intrasubstance signal changes in it with surrounding soft tissue edema and reaction. Uh, and it's disrupted here distally, so it's almost a complete tear uh, distally with intersubstance uh, or interstitial tear more proximally. This is an example of a tibial version of PCL. You can see here that the, there's a small bony component to it which um, uh, appears to have avulsed and the, uh, that signal change indicates uh, the uh, damaged PCL where it's inserts onto the tibia. Uh, I'm going to talk about ACL, uh, which is commonly composed of two bands, the anteromedial and posterolateral, and the anteroperitoneal band is stronger and is most commonly injured in partial ACL tears. So that's what a normal ACL looks like. It's normally a striated structure, uh, which uh, runs smoothly from uh, femoral condyle to the anterior aspect of the tibia, and without any laxity. Uh, these signal changes or striated appearances uh, uh, are normal, is a normal finding. Please don't confuse it with tears. Uh, uh, it's just due to intrasubstance fat uh, that you get this striated appearance of the ACL. Uh, it uh, normally almost follows the Bloom and Sats line, which runs along the roof of the intercondylar fossa. And in this image, you can see there are two different parts the anteromedial and the posterolateral. It can be difficult to differentiate between two bundles, uh, but you may be able to see it in some um, cases. Here is an example of an ACL tear. So that's what a partial uh, thickness tear looks like. So you can see the ACL is thickened. There is intrasubstance signal changes. There is surrounding soft tissue reaction posteriorly. So that is the case of a partial thickness tear of the ACL. Um, here again, there is baby contour or abnormal laxity of the ACL. Uh, and uh, there's some soft tissue reaction posteriorly. So I suspect this is the case of a chronic ACL injury where there has been damage to it pre previously, but now the ACL has scarred and um, lacks in appearance. Here's a case of high grade tear of the ACL. So you can see the ACL is quite attenuated and uh, demonstrating signal change within it. On the, sa on the same patient in the sagittal images, you can see the ACL fibers are redundant, they are slightly horizontal in appearance and of abnormal signal intensity, so that's a case of a high grade tear. Normally the mechanism of injury is pivot shift uh, injury as a result of the uh, posterior uh, impaction of the femoral condyle onto the lateral tibial condyle and you get classic edema pattern into the femoral condyle anteriorly and the posterior margin of the lateral tibial condyle and you know immediately that there has been a pivot shift injury and ACL injury should be highly suspected and uh, commented upon. Just a normal example of an ACL graft. The ACL graft like the original ACL must be uh, of same kind of orientation in relation to the, uh, in relation to the Blumen Sachs line with low signal intense, intensity structure. Uh, with no laxity or minimal laxity and no signal change in it, uh, it should run smoothly and uh, there shouldn't be any uh, waviness or uh, abnormal uh, signal intensity within, within the graft itself. Uh, I want to talk about ACL graft related pathology. So the normal position of the tibial tunnel should be parallel and posterior to the Bloom and Sachs line. So, this red line indicates the Blumen Sachs line, which runs on the roof of the intercondylar fossa here, uh, and the tibial tunnel, which is here, is posterior to it. So that's 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 where it should be. On the on the second image on your right, you can see that uh, we have drawn a Blumen Sachs line indicated by red line, and you can see the tibial tunnel is anterior to it. So uh, this is not where it should be, uh, but it. Uh, entails and it predisposes the graft to abnormal 
uh, biomechanical stress and that causes graft impingement, degeneration and uh, abnormal stress which can cause graft failure or tear. Another pathology which you may come across in post-ACL graft cases is due to patient may have uh, inability to uh, extend fully or limited extension. So you must pay close attention to the HOFAS fat pad and if you see an intermediate or low signal intensity rounded structure uh, close to the tibial um, attachment of the ACL or tibial tunnel uh, that can indicate cyclops lesion which is a granulomatous or fibrotic reaction and that can cause uh, issues with the knee extension. Other pathology you may come across in the HOFAS fat pad is arthrofibrosis where you get scarring and uh, some soft tissue reaction within the HOFAS fat pad and that is just post surgical reaction uh, to the ACL graft procedure. This video is presented in collaboration with Radicon Institute of Radiology. You are welcome to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the notification bell for updates. For more modules in radiology CMEs, please visit our website www.radicon.org.